Hello and welcome back to Talkin' Maya. Today we're going to go over something in Arnold. This is how to make an ocean shader thing the Arnold way, which invariably is much more pretty looking and way more difficult to do. However, we will try to get through this in one shot with only a couple errors. Yeah, hopefully you'll have a pretty solid understanding of the reasoning, or at the very least, the settings which are required to make this work. So, let's get started. We're gonna make a plane. This is gonna get a displacement map attached to it with an EXR image of an ocean vector map thing that will push it all around in the render view. So let's go ahead and get this an Arnold standard surface. There are a couple settings I'm copying from uh, Solid Angle's website on the matter. I'm gonna turn transmission all the way up, which automatically turns off any diffuse uh, settings. So that's kind of handy. Our specular should be set to 1. We need our IOR to be at roughly 1.33. And that takes care of pretty much all of the settings in the actual uh, material. Moving back over to the attribute editor for the object itself, under the Arnold tab, we want to uncheck opaque to get the effects of lighting that we're after. So next on the list is to go into the hypershader. This is where the bulk of our work is going to be done, so I'm just going to open this all the way up. So we want to go into our AI standard surface and under displace, uh, displacement shader, go over to displacement material. And under Maya, there is a displacement section that lets you get to the displacement shader really quickly. You're going to notice this guy pop up with its own uh, material surface thing. Leave it alone. It's not going to hurt anything. It seems to be the way that Solid Angle thinks it should work. So we're going to just, we're just going to roll with it. Under the newly created displacement shader, we need to take a vector displacement. So we're going to create a file to house our uh, image that we're using to create vector displacement. And under file, we want to set a couple things after the fact. So let's go ahead and navigate to your source images, where hopefully you'll have an ocean shape.exr image. You can see there's three different colors going on here. We've got red, green, and blue along with uh, the absence of those colors. And these combine together to give the vector of displacement to our plane. So we're gonna put that into our file, make sure that the color space is on raw. And I believe that's gonna do it, except for the place 2D texture. Now you can leave this alone and it'll work just fine, but I think it looks better with four and four on the repeat UVs. That's gonna make this texture repeat four times over the course of one UV as opposed to the single time. With this whole shenanigan completed, we should theoretically, ah, vector space, vector space, change this to world. I'll give you, I'll give you a prime example of why that is as soon as we put in a physical sky. All right. So let's get our render view open. Get it chugging along here. It, so when we have our displacement material and it is set to world space under the displacement shader right here, we get this nice kind of uh, kind of an effect, right? Yay! Everything's looking pretty solid, pretty happy. Uh, if we look up, you can see the physical sky working its charms on this thing. Uh, however, as soon as we put this to object, oh, oh no. Oh no! Oh, it's hideous! Oh god! Anyway, so it's a. Uh, <laughs> it suddenly turns into an exploding tinsel bomb. So, uh, world is the vector space we want to be working on. So, now the astute among you may notice that this is kind of flat, kind of whatever, right? You get up close to it, it's sort of. Eh. eh, eh. Could be a lot better. Uh, you know, and part of that is that the Sky Dome is only sampling once. So as per usual in my articles, video things, I, I suggest having samples on all of your lights to, you know, above two. I like four, but you can really decrease your render time by lowering or upping these if you have many lights. So the key with this technique is to go to your uh, planes object attribute editor, and go back to the Arnold tab. This is where things can really start to increase your render times. Under subdivision, we're gonna use Cat Clark, 
And currently we have one division. If we zoom out a little bit, we can really see that this single division of subdivisions actually increases the choppiness of our waves quite significantly. So uh, I tend to like to expand this out quite a bit. And the, uh, the article says go up to eight, but I'm gonna cycle through four first because I, I don't know, I don't know. I don't really like eight. Eight just renders super slowly, but uh, I, I think four to six tends to be my sweet spot. I really quite like those. So I'm gonna end up putting this guy to six, which will dramatically like increase render time. However, going from four to six, you suddenly get this crazy change from like weird peaks and valleys and stuff to barely, you know, decent looking waves. Uh, if we go over here, you can see that the light's changing and affecting the color of the waves a little bit here and there. You keep changing your angle and suddenly you've got this really beautiful sunset field. And yeah, ocean's looking pretty good, I gotta say. I think six is where we're gonna leave it on that one. Uh, from there, you can obviously you know, change uh, change various settings. So we're gonna pause this render so we can work a little bit more efficiently. I would like to hide my kind of sad looking physical sky. So I'm gonna create a swell, but I am going to then, oh gosh, kind of lower down this section to create the trough. So hopefully when we render from up here or from down in here, we can kind of sit on top of this wave and things will look pretty good. The other thing to do, I tend to like to give this mesh uh, one extra smoothing and then lower the iterations down to something like four or six or something like that, depending on the look that you're going for. So we zoom in here. Now that we've smoothed, uh, now that we have smoothed, the, um, oh gosh. <laughs> now that we've smoothed the plane, we actually can lower the subdivisions down to four and get a similar effect that we had at six. And the render time is, is significantly improved. So we're gonna try and hide our shame by putting a swell up there. <laughs> and I think I'm actually gonna continue to attempt to, to hide my, my gooberness here. You could just as easily hide the, um, you could hide the uh, sky dome entirely if that's something that you want to do. But I think that it adds a nice kind of contrast to the waves. So we're just gonna kind of poke around and fiddle about until something strikes us as, uh, as working. I think, zoom out like that we can get a feel for how we're going to have this up close water here we're going to have these peaks and troughs i think it's going to work out pretty well for us so with that in mind i am going to increase the specular and transmission to four each and then have ourselves a little render i think we're only going to go to 720 on this one though just to for the sake of render time. Because this does take a couple minutes. So, I mean, just explaining what we've done there, we took a plane, and in the end, I ended up subdividing it once, so that way I could have uh, fewer subdivision iterations over the Cat Clark iteration. Or, uh, anyway, throwing a bunch of words there. But um, having a slightly higher geometry mesh allowed me to lower the amount of subdivisions that the renderer had to be doing like at render time. So if you really want, you can really make your mesh quite a bit dense, uh, denser than I have it here, and it will approximate what this is doing. But I, I was doing some experiments and I found that the subdivisions in the Arnold tab actually provide better results than subdividing it to the same amount uh, in, in geometry. So I would say your best bet is to split the difference between the two techniques. So subdivide it once and bring it to about four and you'll get a pretty decent result that you're starting to see coming around here. Um, 
to explain the, the hyper shader shenanigans that we were doing, all we did was uh, take a pre existing vector RGB file and place that in a file node in the hyper shader and then connect that up as a vector displacement value to our shader material, or uh, our displacement shader, I should say, which then feeds its displacement value into the actual displacement material attribute of our general shader. So I wish I could open it right now, but we're rendering. That would have been much nicer with visuals. But um, basically what's happening at that point is that it's um, using a displacement map effect to change the actual geometry look and feel of your polygons in post, which then have the light uh, playing on them. So it's this really nice technique where you can get some really crazy uh, high density effects on your meshes without having to actually have them be a high density mesh and have you sculpt them manually. So uh, yeah, I dare say this is Pretty decent explanation of what was going on. I know in the Arnold article, they sort of skimmed over all the connections and settings you had to make. So that's the only reason I really made this video was to help explain, you know, the interim steps between. So uh, I don't take credit for any of the actual uh, materials used in this video or the techniques employed, but I did do the grunt work to figure out <laughs> that uh, you know, each setting was supposed to be such and such a way. Um, although that being said, there is a scene provided by Solid Angle with this functioning already, and I did use those node connections to kind of piece out where I was, uh, piece together what I was doing wrong, so just want to save you guys some legwork. I think that's about all I have to say about this. I think I might call this before the vendor is finished. I feel like that's kind of cheating, but, uh. Yeah. I tell you what, there's not going to be any more information after this, so I'm just going to mute the mic and let this finish rendering and end the video there. So thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate your time, and I hope this helped out with one very specific technique in Arnold. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye!